wonderful question here that says, I get bored by routine, like I'm very restless and I have a desire to do things differently. Variation, right? Spice of life. Is this just an affliction of being human and I need to shift my mindset and get more comfortable with routine? Or is there a way I can better work with my desire for change? It's just beautifully phrased question and appreciate particularly because this is a live uh, participant here who's able to, to do that here live. So um, this is such uh, a common experience for all of us. Even though we have this separate part of us that has a desire to be consistent in making progress and consistency often usually means we have to do the same task or the same project or the same habit over and over and over again before we can make progress in, for example, writing. You have to just show up, keep writing every day or you know on a regular basis or making videos or, um, or just, gosh, even you know, making sure our emails are clear or our task, that's a, that's a regular process of, okay, I got to, today, I got to clear my emails again. Uh, today, I got to prioritize my tasks again. And those are all, those can all be seen as routines that can get boring. So what's my perspective on this? So I have basically two ways around this, okay? I'll, I'll talk about the more um, common way, the more mainstream way of doing it. And then, and then I'll talk about a deeper way of doing it. So the more mainstream advice would be, well, every time you're doing something that seems boring, change the way you do it somehow, the environment, say, all right, today I'm going to play this song, this different music, right? So the different environment, uh, audio environment, this visual environment, um, aroma environment, a different, you know, scented candle or a different aroma thing, uh, essential oil or something. So that's one way of keeping things fresh, even though you're doing the same thing. Okay. Let's say, let's say bookkeeping. It's a, it's a great example. Uh, many of us know we have to do our bookkeeping or run our, look at our numbers, but we're not willing to, it's boring, blah, 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 blah. The, the let's talk about the boring part. Cause some, sometimes we have other resistances we can talk about in, in other segments. So change your environment, change the way you do it. Um, okay. So that's a, that's, you know, or literally go to a different place. It's like, oh, I always do my bookkeeping here at the office. It's so boring. Let me go to the, the kitchen, kitchen table. Let me go to the couch, right? Um, let me go to a cafe to do this, right? If it's, <laughs> if it's a secure enough internet connection there for this. So that's the mainstream way of, of, of doing this. Um, the more deeper, because you might say joyful productivity approach to this is to see the routine as a spiritual practice um, and I just realized there are actually two deep ways of doing it, right? I'm just talking about the spiritual practice first. So it's to see the routine as simply a stage for your spiritual practice, whatever that means to you. So for some people, their spiritual practice is meditation. And so, in fact, the more boring a routine is, the more possible it is to focus on your spiritual practice, right? So for example, if I'm doing something that like takes my full attention because it's, you could say it's exciting. I can't, it's hard for me to focus on my spiritual practice because I'm just trying to make sure that I'm like, like, for example, playing a very exciting video game. I'm just like engrossed and I'm like making sure I don't die in this video game or whatever, right? Or doing something new. It's like, oh, I got to solve this problem. Spiritual practice is harder to do. But if it's something boring, let's say maybe bookkeeping is not, well, let's say bookkeeping is boring because you do this all the time and you know exactly what to do. It's very clear to you. It's routine. The spiritual practice might be, okay, it's routine. So therefore I get to focus on my breath. I get to focus, yeah, that's one way. I know the spiritual practice might be, oh, I get to focus on my connection to God. So what does that mean as I'm doing this boring bookkeeping? What does my focus on connecting to God mean? Oh, bringing more love to each number I look at or something like that, right? So another way, so this is a really wonderful and beautiful way because that means there are ever only two things, two, ta two types of tasks in life, something exciting, which naturally engrosses you and keeps you mentally alert. It's nothing you need to do to, to it, it won't be boring, right? It's either not boring or it's boring, 
and you get to focus on your spiritual practice. How wonderful is that, right? So there's a whole, whole spectrum. The more boring something is, the more you can focus on your spiritual practice and therefore grow yourself spiritually, whatever that means to you. Uh, a second deep way of looking at it is to focus on your creativity muscle, you might say. So let's use the bookkeeping task, boring for, for many people. What does it mean to focus on your creativity muscle? It means, how can I bring some playfulness to this right now? I'm not talking about changing your environment. Let's just say the environment stays the same. You're still doing it in your office. You're still doing it the same way with silence, with no music, okay, nothing. Nothing has changed, but you, except for your own mind, mind state um, on this task, you say, hmm, how can I bring some playfulness to this? How can I bring some creativity to how I look at the numbers? Oh, you know, I mean, literally, uh, you know, I might be like using different, different expressions of my body. <laughs> it's like, huh, what does that mean? Oh, what, how come it's like that? Like, however it means to play with the task at hand is using your creativity muscle. How can I play with this? How can I make this more creative? Um, and that's a great practice for your mind and for your creativity uh, self. Um, and the last thing I'll say is that if a task is boring and routine, it brings me to a larger productivity question of, should it be eliminated? If it's boring and routine, maybe you shouldn't do it. <laughs> there's so much else to life to do. Maybe there's a way of, do, of not doing it or doing it less often, right? Eliminating means to not do it forever or to just do it less often. I don't, do I have to do my bookkeeping every day? No. Do I have to book, do my bookkeeping every week? For me, it's a good rhythm to do it every week, but Sometimes I skip a week and that's okay too. The once a month probably is okay, right? So eliminate. If you can't eliminate it because you, you, it has to be done, like taxes, for example, automate it. Can you automate the process of bookkeeping somehow? Of course, right? Like I use Tiller. Tiller HQ is the, is the product, Tiller tillerhq.com. A lot of people use Mint or you need a budget, YNAB. To, uh, or zero XERO in, in other countries, uh, Europe particularly, or get pocketbook in Australia. Anyway, the ways of automating, lots of bookkeeping, right? Automate. If you can't eliminate it, got automated. If you can't automate it, can you delegate it somehow? Delegate it to another team member or a friend or a, uh, or a family member who is happy to take that on for some reason, uh, a friend who can help you out, um, someone you can hire, a freelancer, now, can you delegate it? Because if it's boring, you've better things to do with your mind, right? If, unless you want to use for spiritual practice. And then finally, if you can't delegate it, you can't eliminate, you can't automate it, you can't delegate it, you got to appreciate it. <laughs> it's the no one else can do this except you. No one else. So you already thought about, thought through these things. You can't, you have to be the one to do it for whatever security reasons or for skill reasons or whatever, or budget reasons you have to do. It. And you can, all you can do is appreciate it, which brings us back to either spiritual practice or, or changing the environment, right? Mainstream way of doing this thing or a deeper ways, spiritual practice or creativity practice. So I hope this is helpful. Um, the, by the way, the, the EADA thing is, is a thing I talk about called EDA, the EDA productivity process. You could look at that up, Google it. So. I hope this helps. Thanks for asking.